Household debt has absolutely exploded in this country. Household debt rose $313 billion in Q2 to nearly $15 trillion. Debt is exploding. Now, why is household debt exploding? A lot of it has to do with the items that you normally take on debt to purchase continue to increase in price. House prices have exploded. Car prices have exploded. And so for those items that you normally would go get a car loan or a mortgage for, if they are increasing in price, you have to take on more and more and more debt in order to be able to afford the actual purchase. And so when we went and we looked at all of the different charts, this might be the most aggressive chart accumulation that we've ever had. The Best Business Show research team put it together. So let's just start with the U.S. household debt balance. If we look at the actual debt balance from kind of pre-2004 until now, what we are seeing is everything is moving up and to the right. Mortgages, HELOCs, auto loans, credit cards, student loans, every, everything is up and to the right. We are hitting all-time highs in debt in this country. Household debt continues to rise. Coming out of that 2007, 2008 crisis, you can see where there was a rise. People started to pay down the debt going into 2012, 13, 14, 15, and then it started to take off again, and it has not stopped. If we then look at the non-payers, people who have supportive policy measures continuing to limit delinquency transaction rates, all this means is that the government programs were putting money into people's hands and allowing them to pay off their payments so that, or not maybe not pay off the entire payment, but be able to pay some of the payments so that they weren't delinquent. This is a good thing. The fact that there was less delinquency, the fact that they had more money in their pockets to be able to pay this stuff. That is one positive impact of those programs was the government was basically handing out money to people. They were taking that money and they were paying off their credit card, they're paying off their mortgages. They were paying all these different things. That is important. But then if we look at the actual breakdown of where is the debt surging, where is the actual change in various types of debt, you can see that mortgages by far are seeing the largest increase, 0.7%. Now, 0.7% doesn't sound like it's that big of a number, except for when you think about mortgage debt alone in the United States is now over $10 trillion. Think about that for a second. Student loans, as an example, or a comparison, is about $1.5, $1.6 trillion. So literally, mortgages are more than five, six times as much as student loans. Makes sense. But $10 trillion and annually increasing 0.7%, that is a big, big number. Now, we do see some numbers coming down, like credit cards uh, or other. But overall, we continue to see the debt in America skyrocket. When we look at auto loans and leases, you can see very clearly that we are just on a tear. We're going to continue to grow to the sky. The auto loan and lease market has no chill. There is no chill going on here. Why do we see such aggressive appreciation and kind of collection of auto loans and leases in the United States? $1.4 trillion. There's almost as much auto loans as there are student loans in America. Why? The cost of cars, especially used cars, continues to rise. If we remember a couple of episodes ago, we talked about the used car index is up 50%, 50%. And so naturally, if you want to buy one of those cars and you need a loan, you have to take on more debt in order to buy that same exact car. That is driving a lot of this auto loans and leases. Credit cards are another form of debt that most people are used to looking at. Credit cards have actually been coming down, which is a good thing. You can see that coming out of the 2007, 2008 crisis, a lot of payment down of debt all the way to kind of uh, local lows in 2012, 13, and 14. And then we went back up. Now we're coming back down. Now, what we like to see is, remember, the average balance uh, in America on a credit card, $6,000, and the average interest rate, 16, 17%. Getting that down is important. And so seeing 2020 continuing people to pay off those credit cards or pay down those credit cards is really important. But you know what's not going down? Student loans. We talked about it earlier. There's almost as much car loans in America as there are student loans. The student loan balance continues to drive upwards at a 45 degree angle like nothing can stop it. It does not matter if there's crisis. It does not matter if there's economic booms. It does not matter about anything. The relentless student loan balance continues to explode. 
This chart to me is the scariest thing in the world. All we have watched since 2003 is an absolute 45 degree angle increase in the student loan balance, and it's not going to stop anytime soon. Other consumer debt balances, they drop significantly coming out of 2007, 2008 crisis, but they have rapidly recovered. And we've basically gone sideways through the pandemic. And so when you see this type of rapid appreciation from 2013 and then moving sideways, what it tells you is that people are not paying it down. And then lastly, you can see here the mortgage balances themselves, uh, about $10.5 trillion in mortgages. And what is really fascinating is you can see that the mortgage balances in 2006, 2007, 2008 were at kind of a local high. We then got people paying it down and then we've been on an absolute tear. One of the things that scares the hell out of me about these charts is that today we sit at about $10.5 trillion of mortgage balances, which is much higher, right? More than 10% higher than we were during the housing bubble. If the housing bubble was only nine, nine and a half trillion, but today we are at 10 and a half trillion, maybe we should be thinking about why we called that a bubble and not this. And then lastly, the distribution of credit scores for new mortgages. You can see here that basically, if you have a median score close to 800, a high median score, then you get a new mortgage. But the lower and lower you get, the harder it gets to actually get a mortgage. But the credit score you need to get a new mortgage continues to move upward, right? Seeing that upward movement means that the overall credit needed for a mortgage continues to improve. So when we think about this, the last thing is bankruptcy. Shouldn't bankruptcy filings, if debt is increasing, be exploding? But in a shocking way, last year, there was tons of bankruptcy filings. In 2021, so far, it actually looks like we may beat it. It's gonna be close. There was an explosion of bankruptcy filings last year, but the fewest large bankruptcy filings, so far, we are on pace for today. It's pretty crazy. What do you guys think about this? It just seems like debt is just taking off and it's not going to stop anytime soon. People are going to continue to take on the debt. Yeah, but I think it makes sense when you think about everything in uh, kind of in combination of each other, right? So credit card balances fell pretty dramatically over uh, COVID, which makes sense, right? People were getting stimulus checks. Uh, they couldn't necessarily go out. You're not going to restaurants. You couldn't go to these places. So you're incentivized to save money. Personal savings accounts reached all time highs, I believe during the pandemic, but then uh, mortgages. So like, it's easy to kind of just look at the chart and get lost in the numbers, but the uh, mortgage uh, balances are at over $10 trillion right now. 4.4 trillion of it, 44% of it was added in the last year. So part of that is obviously uh, refinances, people seeing these lower rates and going and refinancing and stuff like that. But then part of it is just the, uh, it, it really shows the cost of these homes now, right? So as the price of homes increase, uh, when people go to get new mortgages, that's where that shows up, right? They, it shows up in the debt of, uh, or the balance of the mortgages that they get. The more expensive the house, the larger the mortgage you have to, to take on. So I think when you think about it in totality, yeah, uh, auto loans are up to 1.1 trillion, which is a uh, staggering amount when you would have looked at it a few years ago. But in the context that mortgages rose 4.4 trillion, like that's crazy. <laughs> The part to me, uh, should we be surprised student loans and car loans are almost equal? About 1.5 trillion each? Like, does that surprise you? Yeah, because when you think about it, like the, the student loans chart, uh, it moves kind of at a regular interval every year, right? So like there's kind of a certain percentage, a fixed percentage, you can call it that, uh, of people that are going to school each year. Maybe that number increases, whatever the percent is, say it's two, three, four, five, whatever. Uh, it's increasing at a steady rate over time. So there's no huge, uh, you know, drop, drop off or gain necessarily each year. So COVID de didn't necessarily have a massive impact on the student loan balances, as opposed to the other charts you look at, and there's a massive drop off in credit card balances, but then there's a massive uptick in mortgages and car loans and all these things. College didn't necessarily get 10 times more expensive or 10% more expensive or 15% more expensive like cars did, right? So the combination of people going to buy cars drives the price up. And then when you go get a loan on the car, that loan is now more expensive and you're taking on more debt to pay it. It makes sense. I guess it's just uh, the, the number of people taking out student loans versus the number of people who own cars. Right, if you think of it from that standpoint, there should be more car owners than college students. Yeah, but the cost yeah. is but probably the, less. The cost is, you know, what uh, the average Let's uh, see, the car average. loan. What's the average car loan uh, in America? My guess is that it's probably somewhere between ten to twenty thousand dollars, if I had to guess. Uh, and if you think of the average college loan, it's got to be 
forty, fifty thousand dollars, right? So, so in some case, it could be as much as two to four times as big, uh, if I had to guess. But I'm not sure, John. What do you think? These charts look like a roller coaster. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, you look at the auto loans chart and it's up. It goes back down once people hit a financial hardship due to the uh, the housing crisis and stuff like that. And I can't. I keep coming back to the thought of if we're in a housing bubble right now. If what, that's what, what we're seeing, because there were more fundamental issues with the 2007, 2008 housing crash, right? The subprime mortgages. And you see, I think the average credit score now to get a, a mortgage origination is like 760. So very high mortgage, you're more likely to pay it back. But I mean, you look at these charts, it looks the exact same. It's so the average higher. loan amount is actually, it's a little higher than I would have expected. The average loan amount for a new car is $34,000. And the average uh, loan amount for a used car is $21,000. Oh, damn, it's on the higher end. Of Get out of yeah. debt. So they say, <laughs> well, so they talk about, uh, and, and that, that is slightly lower than what it would cost on the used car side uh, for a bachelor degree. The average loan taken out on that side is $29,000. So about $8,000 less for used cars. But then you don't take into account uh, law school debt is $145,000. MBA debt is $66,000. So what is a student loan? Like the co just regular college? 29000 so about eight thousand dollars more than a used wow, car. Wow, that that's <laughs> way lower than I would have thought. Yeah, public colleges. Well, yeah, cheaper. there's. Yeah, well, public university definitely is cheaper, but still, if you think about the average, like, well, there's federal subsidies too. Yeah, there's yeah, a yeah, bunch yeah. of things playing, but it's still. Uh, I think I was more surprised about auto loans being, being as twenty one thousand twenty one thousand dollars for a used car is the average. Yeah, that's nuts. And then I guess also part of this is uh, we were talking yesterday about like the buy now, pay later programs. Yeah. Uh, pretty much there's none of that right going on uh, here. And so you have to take on debt. Uh, and when you think about some of these uh, debt that you're actually taking, the explosion of debt in the United States, like household consumer debt, mortgages and cars, uh, I believe, are some of the more expensive uh, loans that you can actually take. Right, so credit card debt obviously is the most expensive, but credit card debt's actually been coming down in terms of uh, the annual percent change. People pay off uh, some of the credit cards there, but auto loans uh, going up, student loans going up, uh, but mortgages being the the greatest contributor. To me, this what this shows you here is it's all being pulled up by mortgages, and the mortgage rates, uh, while they may not be the most expensive they're still pretty high uh, from a carrying cost. And so what it does is it pushes people much, much further. Like if you have an average balance of $6,000 and you're paying, you know, 16%, for example, you're basically paying, let's call it, you know, somewhere around a thousand bucks. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching that clip of the Best Business Show. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so you know when we go live every weekday, and then head to sofi.com slash pomp so that you can get an account and we can get after it.